Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. Hope you're all doing well. I know it's been a few weeks, maybe even longer since I've uh, done a video, but I'm just popping in here real quick to introduce a video that is from probably the end of April. It was the last video I recorded since I took a little break and uh, I did edit it. It kind of starts a little awkwardly because I cut out a beginning, which I talked about stuff that I already covered in my uh, little short that I did about why I was taking a break. So I didn't feel the need to repeat myself for that. So it just kind of starts with me talking about some other things. Wanted to let you guys know that I appreciate the messages and cards uh, that I received. It really means a lot that you reached out to offer support during a difficult time. I'm also happy to report that uh, Things have gotten better with my family situation. I really don't want to go into all that. It's just been kind of a harrowing nightmare for the past uh, six weeks. And I kind of want to put that aside just at least on this video and talk about positive things because there's a lot of good things going on. Uh, James and I have kept up with our podcast, which you can find the latest one on the community page on my uh, YouTube channel. And also, I'm thrilled to announce that the new Bookworms is coming out. That should be out next week. And I hope to, to do a whole video about that. And I will do that because I'm kind of back on track. So I just wanted to say hi and that I miss you guys. And I miss watching your videos. I'm going to try to catch up on some of the videos this weekend if I can. So stick around for my a bit outdated book haul that is going to play right after this. And I'll be back soon. And so will Batilda with the horoscope in June. That's the plan anyway. So, uh, Good seeing you guys. Take care. My dear friend Patrick sent me a lovely package, so I'm going to open that right now. Nothing cheers me up like getting gifts in the mail and cards. I always have my, not that I'm going to have to send a gift, but I always have my address below if you want to send me a card. I always appreciate it. Or Batilda. But oh, wow. Okay. This is demanding my attention. We have a lovely card, as always. I need my glasses. Perhaps the beginning, just to say nice things are going to happen until you make them happen. Nice little message here. Let's see what's going on. Ooh, there's a pin. Ah, the god of endings. Jacqueline Holland? I don't know. The god of endings. Hmm. Ooh, pretty little letter here oh okay dear regina in honor of mother's day i thought i'd send you an interesting novel i discovered last year which involves an awesome female vampire Ooh, mother as the main protagonist i like that idea the writing is gorgeous and i hope you'll enjoy it and be transported enjoy sincerely patrick oh, that's so so sweet okay i guess this pin is from this novel I have not heard of this. Okay, this makes sense now what the pin is. The God of Endings, Jacqueline Holland. What a beautiful hardcover book. Oh, look, from the library, Regina St. Clair. I love that, Patrick, thank you. I don't have, um, I used to have my Ex Libris, um, like custom-made Ex Libris, uh, stickers for my library and I ran out but th this is beautiful wow I'm very tempted to start this right away as I have in so many of the books that you sent me here's another oh what is this a little sign <laughs> to decorate your gothic shelves some friends are like stars you don't always see them but you know they're always there I like this I love this some friends are like stars. You don't always see them, but you know they're always there. Well, I like to think that my friend Sue, who just passed, is a star in the sky, and she's still with us because one thing about her memorial service, it was packed to the rafters. This entire church was packed with people who loved her and still love her. Coworkers, friends, family, an incredible testament to the kind of person that she was and it, and you know you do I know it sounds like a corny thing to say but it's true you do live on in the people 
who know you and your work and your children and your legacies and all of that stuff. So I love this. Thank you. This is cheering me up because it's kind of a cloudy, cold day. Oh, another Anne Rule book. I just added another shelf to my library. So I now have a little true crime section back here. So I'll add this to it. I, you know, I love Anne Rule and I have not read this one. Dead by Sunset. Perfect husband, perfect killer. It's always the husband, I'm telling you. Not always. Sometimes it's the wife. Sometimes it's the mistress. This one is about a mom who did not deserve what she got. Rarely do they. Uh, Anne Rule is great at putting you in the victim's shoes and makes you want endless justice for them. This book is no exception to that rule. That's very true, and that is something I really love about Anne Rule. She really, uh, in all of her books, makes you... Think about the victim, not just romanticize, which can happen sometimes, the villain. All right, that certainly put me in a good mood, and I love this pin. I'm going to find nice places for all of this. So uh, while I was uh, visiting my brother up in Quakertown at the hospital, on the way home, I hit some thrift stores. There's this wonderful Christian bookstore. It's this whole section that has uh, one... It's called Share and Care, and they play really bad, like, Christian rock music while you're in there. So it's, you know, I, I always bring my phone and my headphones so I can listen to a podcast or music. But uh, there are three, sh like, it's a whole row of shops. It's, like, furniture, clothes, books, and knickknacks and all kinds of things. So I loaded up on all of that and found some great stuff. So let's get started. I wanted to talk about the... Um, just quickly that I did see the first Omen. I might've mentioned that in my last video. I did at the end. It was really good. It is directed by Arkasha or Arkasha Stevenson. Nice to see a female director. And it was a very, very good movie. I was pleasantly surprised. Grumpy Andrew did a review of it, which I will link below if you, if you wanna check it out. I definitely want to see this movie again. It was very good. And I'm also watching an incredible series on Netflix. This is Ripley, directed by Stephen, I think, and also written by or adapted by Stephen Zalian. This is a new version of the Ripley story by Patricia Highsmith. Is her novel called The Talented Mr. Ripley? I think it is. And, uh, or just Ripley. I think it is The Talented Mr. Ripley. I read the book a long time ago when that movie came out. I love that movie. I just rewatched it. And as I'm going into this series, I, I did have resistance because I'm like, oh, it can't be as good as the movie. What, what are they doing? Let me tell you, it's so opposite the movie in a brilliant way where the movie is this beautiful, bright color uh, of Italy and, and the sea and the clothes and everything is just really... La Dolce Vita, you know, times 100. This is uh, all black and white. Beautiful photography, cinematography. It's seedier. It's more sparse. The characters are portrayed completely differently. And it works. I don't know how it works, but it works. It's so good. In fact, I was watching... I haven't finished it yet. I, uh, Joe and I have been watching it. And w when it got to the boat scene, I'm like, there's no way they're going to top the boat scene in the, the movie, you know, with Matt Damon and Jude Law. I'm not saying it topped it. It did a different interpretation. In fact, the whole Ripley character is a different interpretation. He's much older. He's not, he doesn't have that, that innocence that Matt Damon or, you know, like the, the Matt Damon character, I'm not saying he wasn't, Ripley is a psychopath, but in that movie, he, he kind of starts out more like, He's neurotic and in, in love with with Jude Law, with Dickie. And the scene in the boat, a spoiler if you've never seen it, but in the scene in the boat, he doesn't start out wanting to kill him. It's more of like it happens spontaneously and, and um, you know, and then he be, kind of becomes more of a cold, calculated psychopath. At least that's my interpretation of it. In this movie, or in this uh and interpretation adaptation it is like he is this cold scary psychopath played by uh, Andrew Scott and I don't know if he's wearing contact lenses 
uh, let me know in the comments below if you've noticed this or if you know, but he has like these black, shiny shark eyes and really, really scary character. It's a very understated performance. All the acting is, is very understated. It's great. I highly recommend it. So I have to finish it. Oh, I did want to mention that I did read a book. This was in my last Creepy Crate. So I actually read something new from the Creepy Crate. Hooray. And it was really good. This is uh, Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. This is a new book. I think this is actually an art copy. So I feel very uh, special for having read it. This was really good. It's very like, it's a very like suburban commercial kind of uh, mystery fiction about a, a woman who is, uh, her best friend dies under uh, mysterious circumstances and she's discovered like wandering bloody by the side of the road the night of a friend's wedding and there's and she has no memory of what happened she's never charged with a murder but a lot of people think that she is guilty and then this guy starts doing a podcast about it it's a really good idea and uh then they meet up and kind of form a relationship and and, and it's but it's a whodunit you know you don't really know and i'm not going to give it away but you don't know uh the real killer it's good it's very good. I haven't read like popular fiction like this for a while, so it was nice to read it and I, I, I zipped through it. Okay, so what I'm currently reading, and I haven't gotten very far with it just because of everything that's going on, but I found this uh, nice copy. This is a book club copy in a thrift store of The Boys from Brazil by Ira Levin. Nice copy. And uh, at first I thought, oh, this is the first edition. It's actually the book club edition, but it's still really nice. And I had never read, I think I've read almost everything Ira Levin has ever written. I love him. He's one of my favorite writers. He's the writer I aspire the most to emulate as a writer, but I never read The Boys from Brazil. Certainly heard of it. And I had never seen the movie, so I didn't know the big twist I watched the movie first, I have to confess. So now I know what the big twist is. I'm not giving it away, but it certainly surprised me and delight. I was delighted at how clever it was. So I am continuing to read this book, is my point, and it's good. So in my phone, I always carry a list of the Nancy Drew books I am missing. And I found this at the thrift store. This is number 18, The Mystery at the Moss Covered Mansion. I'm sure I read this one when I was a kid, but I don't remember it. I found another of uh, Phyllis Whit Whitney. Actually, I found this in the little library in my neighborhood. This is called Flaming Tree. There she is. This is an old library book. Anytime I'm at a thrift store, and I was talking to my friend James about this, and he's he's found some really good books at his thrift store. He won't tell me what his where his sources are, so you know, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm sure he would tell me if I asked. But uh, we were talking about Stephen King books and how we always look to see if we can find that elusive signed first edition. Well, I think this is a first edition. It's not signed, but this is Stephen King, uh, The Cell, or just Cell? I thought it was The Cell cell the cell phone all right so i also found and i was thrilled to find this at the christian bookstore alfred hitchcock's monster museum i have a couple of these wonderful alfred hitchcock presents anthology books with the incredible illustrations the cover is the same as the dust jacket which is nice I think these came out in the 60s, I'm pretty sure. We had these books as when we were kids, or we got them out of the library, but they're great. This book has that like musty smell, it's gonna make me sneeze. Uh, 1965, this book came out. Illustration by Earl E. Mayen. The illustrations kind of look like the Saul Bass titles that were used in some Hitchcock films and other films back in the 60s. Okay, moving on. I found this book and I've never read it, but I remember the movie because I was traumatized by it. And this is uh, Looking for Mr. Goodbar by Judith Rosner. This was a movie, or is a movie, 
with Diane Keaton that came out in the 70s that for a young teenage girl uh, kind of coming in coming of age <laughs> going to see this movie it was really depressing and horribly traumatizing because it's kind of like the message and I don't know what the book is at least I remember seeing the movie the message in the movie is that if you're a woman who's attempting to live a, a free life uh, and to be like a free sexual being that horrible things will happen to you so I'm looking forward to reading this. Actually, I think I might save this for Garb August. All right, I got another one of these uh, Kim Bros Saga of the Fenwick Women. This is number three, Margaret the Faithful. I have a bunch of them, and you know what? I haven't checked yet to see if I have this one. But I got to tell you, I read the first book, and I was so kind of disappointed by it that I never picked up the series. But I will, I will pick it up because, you know, I don't want to give up on the whole series. Plus, I have a bunch of them. Maybe they'll get better. Maybe it just, it didn't meet my expectation. I expected gothic romance and it was kind of something else. So uh, this book, I was thrilled to find. In fact, this book literally jumped off the shelf, like fell off the shelf and hit me. And you know, when a book does that, it wants you to buy it. So uh, this is, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Eyes of Laura Mars. I didn't know there was a book version of it. And the only thing I'm a little disappointed about is that there are no black and white film stills in the middle of it. Now this could be, it could have been, the movie could be based on this book and then they just reissued it when the movie came out to have Faye Dunaway's mug on the cover. I love that movie. I just watched it recently again. It's so good. Let me know in the comments below if you love that movie as much as I do. It's all about 70s fashion. It's wonderful. Murders based, uh, Tommy Lee Jones is in it too. Murders based on violent fashion photography, like Vogue photography. The, the photographs were actually done by the great German fashion photographer, Helmut Newton, based on his work. Okay, and uh, Brad Dorif is in it too. It's a great, great movie. This is one I found at the thrift store. I just picked it up because I don't know, it looked kind of cool. This is called The Dawning by Hugh B. Cave. Looks like some kind of maybe vampire book. Recipient of Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Horror Guild, Horror Writers Association, World Fantasy. I feel like I should know this author, Hugh B. Cave. Okay, it's a long description, but I'll add it to my paperbacks from hell and, you know, get to it eventually. All right, this book I picked up, I have a, a, a newer edition but I just love these old Warner's Handbook of English. You know, I hate to be like, we need to get back to basics, but if you wanna really hone your English skills, your language skills, nothing beats one of these old Warner's. You don't need all the fancy new stuff. It's just basic. Oh, <coughs> another book that's making me choke. You know, the art of diagramming sentences is something I'd like to get back into. My older sister found this, uh, book from the 1930s I think it was and it was preparation for your high school diploma and it was like old school English stuff history of course you know some of it would be outdated because it was from the 30s or, or you know wasn't updated obviously and uh, geography which of course has changed a lot but you catch my drift basic math basic English and uh, she said she was going through it and working on it. And she's like, it was really hard. So graduating from high school, you used to have to actually pass certain tests to get your diploma. I don't know if it's still the case, but anyway, that never hurts to go back to basics. That might be a bit of a controversial take, but I don't know, I'll risk it. Here's something from a, like an old school April kind of thing. Goosebumps Monster Survival Guide, based on the movie. Oh, there's a sticker on it. I, I've not seen the movie, but I couldn't resist this. Monster Survival Guide. I might uh, gift this to the, the Jolly Boys, who are big Goosebumps fans. I think that would be fun for them. All right, what else? Uh, more stickers. This is an anthology that looked interesting. Mistresses of the Dark, Margaret Atwood, Jamaica Kincaid, Doris Lessing, others, looks like female horror writers and suspense writers in a nice anthology, women in horror. 
Always want to support that. Here's another uh, book that I like these gothic romances from this time. I hate that they put stickers on it. Urgh. Okay, I'm going to resist the urge to peel that off because I want to do it in a way that won't rip the dust jacket, but it just annoys me. 99 cents. This is The Fen Tiger by Catherine Marchant. It's probably a book club edition. Here's another one along the same uh, lines. Phyllis A. Whitney, Rain Song. There she is. I have a whole bunch of these books, and I just, these are the ones that I just kind of covet the aesthetics of it. And this one looks kind of fun, and I love the cover. This is The Infidel, a Magnificent Novel of Love and War by Georgia Elizabeth Taylor. Look at that cover. Some sexy chic having his way with this limp heroine. I mean, I just I just want to read it so bad. It looks great. I feel like the cover art like that, the illustrated cover art is, we've, I don't know, I haven't seen it done that well recently. Maybe it's all AI now. All right, almost at the end here. Uh, and this one is another one of these along the same lines, uh, The Girl by Catherine Cookson. Kind of a romance. And then the last one I picked up, this is one for, uh, I'm giving to Batilda. This is the complete book of fortune telling, a comprehensive survey of every method of looking into the future. It's a big old volume. And I think this came out in the nineties and it's kind of like a, a bit of an encyclopedia. It has a divination of dice and dominoes. In case you ever wanted to know that different moon phases and all kinds of fun stuff. I do have a shelf dedicated to esoteric topics like this. So this is right up my alley. So I feel better just having a nice little chat and looking at books. And I wanted to thank Patrick again for the lovely Mother's Day gift. And hopefully I'll see you before Mother's Day. But if not, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And uh, if you have any comments about any of the uh, books that I mentioned today or if you watched Ripley or The First Omen, I would love to hear your thoughts. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library, and I'll see you soon. Bye.